Greetings everyone, my name is Atterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Maker. During the last part, I covered 4 Virus Made levels. So in this part, I'll be covering at least 4 or 5 more Virus Made levels, starting up with this one. The Final Factory of 2018 by Kroby, with 23 plays and a score of 1. As always, if you want one of her levels to be featured in a future part like this one, please leave both the level name and level ID either in the comment section below or direct message me on Twitter. Also as always, the full disclaimer of this entire OP series is linked in the description below. Also in the description are the timestamps for all the levels that cover these parts. So if you want to check if her level is covered, expand the description. A surfing segment, I guess. Or not. Or just use charge kick, that works too. A very short level, as expected by the very short loading times. Nothing more to say about the stage other than it was very straightforward and somewhat forgettable. Second level on the lineup is Dark Dizzy Stage Mega Man X5 Recreation by Francis Cornerback with 65 plays and a score of 22. Loading time wasn't that long. Huh. I probably want access to the jet adapter so I won't swap over the base. As the title states, this is a recreation of one of the stages from Mega Man X5. And you are forced to use either base's dashing abilities or Mega Man's jet adapter, otherwise you cannot cross the gaps. I never played Mega Man X5 before, so I'm not sure how much of a fateful recreation this stage is. For those who played through X5 in the past, let me know in the comment section below how fateful this stage is to the original.
The one common aspect throughout this level is that I'm getting hit by almost everything. And that's all my incompetence. Oh goody, this stage takes place in alternate dimensions as well. Not alternate dimensions, but it gravity flips the entire stage. As before, the spikes were on the ground, now they're above us. All the enemy positions, as well as the level design, is flipped once I enter the teleporter. And I think I know why my only special weapon is the Gemini Laser. As Dark Dizzy's original weakness is Shining Firefly special weapon. Or as he was called in the original English version of Mega Man X5, Easy Glow. Otherwise, that was an okay to decent level. I wish its gravity swapping gimmicks were taken further, but it was intending to be a recreation anyways. So I guess my thumbs up. Third level on the lineup is The Shining Tennis, with 8 plays and a score of 0. Well, that was unexpected. Um, can I win this now? Probably not, so let me start from the beginning again. If only I got clipped into the center. If only that Yafu wasn't there, this boss fight would be a cakewalk. Thankfully, I also started with 4E tanks. Thank <laughs> you. 
so Dao is this boss arena. Rather simple, but effective. Fourth level in the lineup is... The Avatar Training in Sharoon Temple, Hard, by La Patio, with 24 plays and a score of 5. This level is going to be at least 30 to 40 screens long, and is also labeled as a hard level. Although considering several of La Patio's past hard levels, they may not be too challenging. In fact, some of the levels La Patio labeled as normal are harder than some of the levels labeled as hard. We start with a Puka Riding segment. A very straightforward one with no enemies. The first of four elements, I guess. Well, I need that. Let me reset the room. And I actually need to fire it in the opposite direction. The challenges starting out are very simple. Well, that was strange. Somehow the Pooker blocked the big fish enemy. Transitioning over to Proto Man. And we're back outside again. So I suppose that was the water temple? Or the water subsection of the temple? This is the earth subsection of the temple. Where I gain access to both the power stone and the toss pin. Not just one special weapon. So I presume the next two elements are air and fire. For a moment there, I was worried I wouldn't be able to make the jump. Destroy all the weapon blocks, go outside to reset the room, and come back. As I need to bounce on top of these enemies. And not deflect their shots back with Proto Man's shield.
That's what I wanted to do. Thank you for bombing the ground instead. Gotta be fast in this section. And I need to reset here as they don't reset when I scroll past the screen. Going this round, I see. Wow, I fell down the only hole. I panicked a bit over there. No worries, the checkpoint was only two screens away. And the power stone always comes out behind me, not in front of me. Now I've moved into the fire subsection of this temple, where I gain access to the firestorm and playing as base. Slow down. I hope that's fixed in a future revision of this game. The fire part of the temple is so much easier than the water part, especially tanks to bases increase mobility. Last but not least is the air section. We have the NATO. I fully restocked everything. Oh no.
Made it. Thank you for the Yashiki. That's super helpful. And to get up over there, I'll just use a NATO. Not taking any chances. I could use the Windstorm, but I'd rather not. It may have been a safer option to use the Windstorm anyways. Wait a minute, I can skip this entire challenge by doing this. I should have taught it that earlier. At first I thought there was a solid wall to the left. Which means that this challenge is now a cakewalk. Now a jet adapter. Or can I just use a NATO? I can. It completely counteracts the fan. Nevertheless, I'm at the end of this avatar training. We had four sections dedicated to each of the four elements, those being earth, water, fire, and air. I thought I wasn't clipping the spikes, but I guess not. Okay, now it decides to work. Just once more. I was worried I was going to end up dying there anyways. Nevertheless, this was a nice, challenging level. Fifth level on the lineup is Serotanium Warehouse by Neo Cutman with 10 plays and a score of negative 1. The previous stage was definitely labeled correctly. It was a somewhat hard level. Not super challenging like several Diet Kaza levels, but still more on the challenging side, especially if you don't have practice with a few of the special weapons. Particularly the Windstorm and NATO. Liking the background and foreground tile sets here. I'm liking the background and foreground tile set combinations. I'm just button mashing through here. I was expecting that to happen. That's why there was a checkpoint just before this section. So quick reactions are needed for this room. Wait. 
I lost access to the Mega Buster, which I need. I forgot about that one. Now let's proceed onwards with this stage normally. Hold on a minute. Can I push the push blocks by doing this? Yes, I can. I didn't know you could do this. But now I'm stuck because that blocks the way. Good to know, though. I totally expect some puzzle levels to use this gimmick now, now that I've showcased it. Well, a few more to be fair. Well, that's neat as well. By using the Sparkman platforms, we can shove the push blocks into the ceiling. I did this puzzle in the wrong order. This is turning into a puzzle level. Not that I'm complaining. I need to make sure that the middle drops more than the right side. I can get through like such. I'm liking where the state is going. It's currently one of my contenders of being my favorite level for the episode. That should be enough blocks. I just need to make sure I get ahead of the block, otherwise I will get stuck. Or this can happen too. I need to make sure not to despawn them. Oh rats. I need to do it from above. Fine with me, this is a nice little puzzle. And this was actually optional, whoops. I thought this was mandatory. Seeing how the stage was going. Why do we have an opening on the right side though? There's no need for that. It really makes it look like there's actually a pathway to the right. Just be careful not to get too greedy and get crushed against the block. 
I would have preferred if there was one more checkpoint before this one, but I don't mind it too much. Trying to block me off, I see. I probably need that, don't I? Not quite. There we go. Stacking them on top of each other. By doing it this way, that works too. Um, I did this in the wrong order. This is going to take a short while to understand, and because of this, this will be the final level I'll cover in this episode. Maybe if I drop them in reverse order it'll be better. No, I need all three of them at once. Perhaps timing it better will work too? Like so. Now I can jump on top of each other. And now I can reach the ladder. You might as well title this stage Push Block and Pooker Shenanigans. This is definitely my favorite level of the episode. Trying to crush me once again. And you are successful this time. That's why I do as a checkpoint right before this segment. Especially after that more difficult puzzle. A bit of a bit of a tight squeeze near the end, but we're at the end of the stage. Phenomenal level, at least a 7 or 7.5 out of 10. I say that this was an almost good to good puzzle level. Nice escalation and introduction of challenges, and nice recombination of gimmicks near the end. There were almost no enemies to speak of in this stage, outside of perhaps the Pookers, and that was to the stage's benefit. Let me guess, to defeat Hardman, I need to crush him against the side of the wall. And I failed to do so once again. Let's try again. I know exactly what to do, I just need to time it better. In fact, that's my only option too. I'll probably edit down a part of this level, but other than that, 
I'll leave most of my follies in for posterity measures. Well, I understand why I got a negative score though, especially due to some of the challenges, as if you're not careful, you can either get yourself soft locked, or you can get yourself crushed against the wall. At least there were no engine issues, and the level design was superb. Great work, Neo Cutman. I'd love to see a part 2 of this stage, or any of your other puzzle oriented gimmick stages. So, overall, out of the 5 levels I covered in this episode, my favorite level is the aforementioned Serotanium Warehouse. So, in the next episode, I'll be covering several more Veer Smith levels. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!